I mean, you said you were around Pac for like a month. What was really the vibe at Death Row? Because I talked to a lot of people and, you know, some of the stuff that was depicted, you know, like, for example, straight out of Compton, people getting beat up in the studio, people getting uh -huh. smacked around, like, they all pretty much told me it happened, like, from DOC to, uh -huh. you, know, you know, RBX to whoever else. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, from your point of view, what was the Death Row environment like? Well, when I got there, a lot of the people wasn't around anymore. When I got there, he was just doing How Do You Want It? He's just filming a video and toss it up. So a lot of the cats, they wasn't there no more when I got there. Because I'm asking, where's Dre? He's like, he don't be around. And that was it. Um, it was just basically me, him, and the outlaws. And every other day, it'd be Suge and another guy that used to be with him all day. And Frank, the other guy, the, the, the off-duty cop guy, Frank, used to drive the van. And that was it. And basically, me and Pac would be in the, in the drop-top bends, and the uh, outlaws would be in the Land Cruiser. And we were always riding the convoy, going to the studio, things like that. And one day, we were going to the studio one evening, and everybody else turned going a, a different direction. I'm like, yo, what's up? Where we going? He's like, I got to make a stop. Got to meet this guy. So we met this guy, and... Uh, we rode up in the hills and stuff. We going past different homes. And I'm like, what is this? We go into the gate, nice big house with pillars. I'm like, yo, who live here? He was like, we gonna be living here as soon as we turn the key, baby. We just bought this joint. I'm like, what? We go up in there, carpet so thick you couldn't stand. We going up the stairs, running through the joint, just me and him. And he was like, you still wanna go to the studio? I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I'm out here with you, whatever you wanna do, baby. He's like, fuck that, let's have a party. Next thing you know, we bust out the chronic, we rolling up. He had the rest of the fellas meet at the bottom of the hill. They all came up like, oh, snap, what is this? He's like, it's the crib. You know, so we was doing that. He was like, I'm just trying to stay with family, man. I, I'm not trying to be around all these people no more and stuff like that. And he, I guess he was trying to get himself together. And every now and then I would catch him just with his hands like this and just staring at the sky and stuff like that. What was Suge like during this time? And what was Pac's relationship with Suge like? It was cool. Uh, besides me shaking his hand and my whole hand fit inside his hand, <laughs> it was cool. He didn't say much. He would come around the house. Before you know it, he done broke out. And that would be it. So all of the other interaction and stuff that everybody else got a chance to see, I didn't, I didn't get to see any of that. Now, now, Pac had uh, Machiavelli Records at the time? What about, yeah. 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 And he wanted to sign you to Machiavelli Records? Yeah, which was going to come through uh, Death Row. Not the Death Row West, not all of the other extensions that they were making. He was like, right here, the one that got all the problems, because they said it ain't no positive rap that comes out on here. And he's like, yo, music is just fun. Okay. Now... They were saying that Pac wanted to leave Death Row before the time that, you know, he got killed. Was that true at all, or was he happy at Death Row? I don't know. I've never heard it out of his mouth. Maybe, maybe he did. A couple of people that I talked to that they were, they were close to Pac and recorded with him said that, you know, based on conversations they had with him, he felt like he wasn't going to be around very long, and he needed to hurry up and get as much of this music out as, as possible. That's why he recorded so fast, and that's why he recorded so much. Like... As someone who, who did a lot of songs with him, how did you feel? I feel his work ethic was amazing because he would be like, yo, all right, take that reel off. Put the other reel on. Yeah, you make the beat. Do the beat. Do the same way you make next move beats. Do, do the beat. I'm like, word? Yeah, just do the beat. he get the pen out, yellow pad. All right, let's do it. Let's go in the booth. You do the hook. It, it was just crazy. He was working, he was definitely working like a madman. So I, I don't know actually, you know, what was on his mind because I ain't gonna sit here and say things that some other people may say, like, he was doing this because of this and that. You know, when, when you're gone and you're not able to speak for yourself, everybody will say whatever the hell they want to say. So, but for what I saw, you know, he wanted to work, he was working. And maybe, maybe he did have a vibe of feeling like, you know, time was short. I got that vibe right now, and I ain't worried about nobody harming me, but I just know that this is not promised. Right, because Pac had, had gone through the shooting already. 
you know, but before that, he had already been shot, you know, in the quad studio situation. Uh, so, you know, just that alone would, would make you would make you realize that like yeah, you know, life yeah. is pretty fragile. And, and being and being incarcerated. Yeah. You're like, yo, I don't know what'll happen. You know, once you're in there, you're not sure exactly what day you're getting out. You may do one other thing that'll put you in there, and by the time you come out, if you do come out, all of this is done. It's over. So it could play a lot of parts. I, I'm, I'm not certain, but I just know that his work ethic was, uh, it was amazing. It made me want to work more, and it, it made me work like how I'm working right now. Like I, I just finished an album with Positive K called The Great Minds Album, and now I'm on the last song of my own album. You know, I'm, I'm doing as much as I can do because, like we said, tomorrow is not promised. Uh, rest in peace, Fife Dog. You know, uh, he actually in one of the new videos that I just did. And it's just letting me know, like, how close and, and how fast and short this life is. Like, when you and I first got on this, on this uh, screen today, we talking about how we still here. And um, anything can happen, so. Yep, absolutely. You, you and Fife Dog were close? I mean, I know him since the time of the beginning of their career. So, yeah. We had precious moments. We had times where we sat on the sidewalk and talked. You know, we sit on the curb and talk on the sidewalk. <laughs> I mean, I saw a breakdown of rappers who died, like, in their 40s. And it's, it's a pretty big fucking list, man. Like, Heavy D. It was fairly young when he died. I think he was like 40 something. Nate Dogg was like, four, uh, I think he was even in the late 30s. Like you, you have this, this generation of, of people who are dying way too early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think stress play a big part in that too. Stress is, is, a, is a monster. Stress is a monster in all types of forms and fashions. And you know, if it's messing with your mental, then it's gonna mess with your physical. Um, yeah, I, I definitely believe that plays a big part. And I try to embrace myself better these days and try not to let certain things get to me a certain way because you only got one life. At the time that the Tupac died i mean he, he was he was one of the biggest things in music i mean not only because of the music itself but also all the controversy that, that went with it but when you look at the impact that he had after he died it sort of went to a whole other place like you know i, I interviewed uh kimani marley and he actually compared uh tupac to bob marley in terms of you know, the impact that he made and how much you know the social message behind what he did why do you think tupac made the type of impact that he did the content the content definitely and his expression, he seemed very passionate about whatever he was saying, whether it was violence, whether it was love, whatever, he was real passionate about what he said. You could hear it in, in the depth of his voice when he, when he spoke and, and when he rapped and when he did his interviews. You know, a lot of times you hear him about the people. Uh, one thing I can remember him saying to me was like, we all gotta be millionaires, not just me, we all gotta be millionaires. And I was like, all right. It was a time when he took me in the kitchen in his crib. And he was like, yo, here. He gave me a couple of grand and told me, here, get your T-shirts, get all that stuff you need. I love you, man. And that was that. So that's what I'm going to speak about on, on this brother. I mean, everybody got their own stories. And, but the only thing he's done to me and done with me was, was positive things. So bless his soul.